What's up, it's your boy back at it again with another technical analysis of underrated throwers. Uh, today we got Zoltan Cavago. Um, he has PR 69 meters from the country Hungary, and this is him when he was a non reverser. Um, and this is him, well, I guess his silver medal throw at the 2004 Olympics in Athens. Um, and the reason I wanted to pick him is, one, he threw 69 meters, and he got a silver medal in the Olympics, and I don't think, he had a long career, um, and he threw relatively far, was relatively consistent, went to a reverse later on in his career, but I liked him, I liked his technique better when he was younger and didn't reverse um but um the reason i really wanted to pick him is also because he's really unique because he does a lot of he he throws a lot like a woman and i don't mean that in a bad thing i mean like he uses a lot of flexibility and a whole lot of torque um to throw the disc unlike most men and i believe he's really hyper mobile which so he can use that to his advantage and a, a lot of men cannot throw like him. I think he's very reminiscent of Sandra Perkovich in terms of some of the te technical stuff he does. Um, but you'll see. Let, let's play this a couple times. Very whippy, very explosive, very fast. Has a whole lot of rhythm. Um... But yeah, I. You can really see he gets a whole lot into that finish. But let's break this down now. Oops. Um. So on his wind, very dynamic. Almost reminiscent of a Mac Wilkins kind of wind, where he starts high, goes low. Except now he just stays the subtle instead of going up again. But winds very far back, really stretches, really stretches his right side, and his left arm is way far back, almost facing the back of the sector. But you notice when he does this, he keeps both his feet the same way. And what that will do is it will build tension, because if he let this left leg turn with him, he won't have that sort of he won't have that torque and tension in his core. And what he does is he just holds that that upper body position w with his right side the whole way. Look how far back his discus is. Not many throwers can not many men can throw with like the disc this far back behind their hip. Very few and just hold it there. It takes a whole lot of shoulder mobility and strength to do that. And a whole lot of discipline. But what he does, sorry about the call, this is in 2004. Um, what I also like is that he, because, well, he is 6'7", so he kind of does what a lot of really tall people would do in this, like Alekna or Lars Riedel, is that they will um, bend this left leg, I mean, oops, uh, bend the left arm. So they don't travel too far across the circle because it shortens everything. But what what to look for is that when he does that, he's still keeping his right arm straight and in line. It follows his natural orbit. I know it's hard to see; it's all blurry. Um, another thing that he does really well is is keeping his right leg on the ground. Um, actually, let me take that back. He actually pulls this off. He actually picks up his right leg kind of early. But he has to do that in order to keep this back. If he kept... If he... It would, it would be almost impossible to keep this kind of tension. Um, like, this, this disc is way... As back far I mean, as far back as he does, without picking his right up 
I would even say early. Because what that does is it allows him to keep that disc farther back easier. Because if he kept his right leg on the ground until like here. Um, that disc would catch up because no, nobody, it's I think physically possible to actually hold your disc that far back and your upper body that far back while keeping your leg that far, like that long on the ground. Your right leg, I mean. But he gets a really nice, really wide sweep. Really wide. Really, really balanced. Uh, oh, also the other thing I want to point out. Is he kind of starts the same way as John Powell. Where his, where his right leg... No, no, I'm sorry. His left leg is on this side of the sector. Instead of just lined up with these two lines. And what this allows him to do is all he has to do is pivot. Is pivot around and then he lands directly in the middle. He kind of he kind of cuts it off a little. So for all you have a problem like getting really um have a problem going that way or this way or having problems just going down the middle, try starting somewhere else in the ring. And it might help you just land perfectly in the middle. It could, it, and it could also be a little cheat code if you're having problems like during a meet. You could just try it. I would not recommend doing it for the first time in a meet. But it's just a little adjustment you can make if you're having problems like sectoring a throw, and but they're like really far sectors. Just start a little somewhere. Just start a little bit more offset and just do the same thing that you were doing, and it would probably go in sector. But I would not. Again, I would not recommend trying that in a meet for the first time. Um, but yeah, because of that, because he start, his right leg is right here, all he has to do is he has to do very little pivoting with his left. Like his left is basically off the ground right there. And normally... If, if this leg was facing this way and he was starting here, like his left leg was here, he would be way over here, way over rotated because his left leg's pointed here. But because his right leg starts here, it will automatically just get down in the middle. Right there. Okay. And um, also another thing I want to point out now that we're getting to the middle is he is kind of jumpy, but again, he is 6'7". Um, so he he can't really, like... I mean, I won't even say he's that jumpy. No, he's not jumpy. I mean, kind of. He What he does, it looks like he's jumpy, but what he really is doing is just sweeping really, really high and wide with his right. I know it's very blurry and... I'm hard to see. I'm sorry I couldn't get better quality of him on non-reverser. Um, but, um, and what that does is it allows them to get this extreme orbit and allows them to also do a really nice hip curl into the middle. So he lands almost directly in the middle. Um, and normally, I would say for a shorter thrower, you would land a little bit further um, to the front of the ring with your right foot. But because he's so tall and because he's a non-reverser and he wants a wide base, because in a non-reverse, you don't really want a lot of up. It's just rotating through a really strong left side block. You really want a wide base so that you really can't go up. Um... But, yeah, it lands very well. Really nice hip curl. Normally, a normal throw would be like, his right foot would be facing this way when it lands and it would already be down. Because he gets a really nice hip curl. And what I mean by hip curl is when he's sweeping and then into the sprint phase, he curls his right leg using his groin muscle and actually like curls it so that it's facing this way like a Lars Riedel. 
that's about the same position a Lars Riedel's foot would hit. And what this does is it allows, first of all, it builds a whole lot of torque while in the air. So you see how his hip is already facing like this way. So then by the time his left gets down, his disc is all the way back here. I mean, it's hard to see. I think it's right there now. But his hip is already like basically turned all the way. So then all he has to do is hit that left side block and just continue that right side and then and basically just let the momentum and, and stretch and torque take over and he just holds that. That's a beautiful block. Beautiful block. Almost, almost Robert Harding-esque in 2009. I mean, he is not that level with the shoulders, but he's also fo he's following his orbit. His orbit is a little off just because of where he started. I don't say off; it's just it looks kind of weird. I mean, his left could get down a little later. I mean, a little earlier. Like it could get down like here, so that his his shoulders would be a le little more level. But it's a it's. It's the Olympics. He's just getting after it. It's not going to be the most technically sound throw. It's not training. Um, and it got him silver, so screw it. Um, but yeah, really nice technique. But this is a really reminiscent of what like a Sander Perkovich or or like a lot of non-reverse women would get like this this kind of whip and extension like hit, the disc is like all the way back here and his left is down it's crazy like very few men can hit that position so for any of you guys or women who who are really hyper mobile and not that strong i don't know his weight room numbers i'm assuming he's really strong but for all you or maybe those of you who are JAV and DISC people in in college or high school, maybe use Zoltan Cavago as a technical model because he has a lot of the same attributes that a JAV thrower would have. Really hypermobile shoulders, but strong and stable. Um, and yeah, but you can also use this kind of technique if you're not that strong. To compensate for that because it relies more on torque rather than just brute force so yeah hope you enjoyed and see y'all next time